Welcome back, everyone, to the School of Greatness podcast. Very excited about our guest today. His name is Gary Vaynerchuk. Good to see you, my man. Great How are you see doing? You. I'm glad we get to do this in person this I time. know, man. I'm super pumped. And uh, I appreciate you having me on your show a couple months ago for my book. So thank you for that big push. And a lot of people have said they found me because of you. So no worries, brother. Thank you. Appreciate it. So You're hopefully welcome. I can repay the favor and we, we can sell a ton of books for you. You've got a new book out uh, called Ask Gary V. Hashtag Ask Gary V. One Entrepreneur's Take on Leadership, Social Media, and Self-Awareness. And let's start with that. Why did you decide to write this book? You've written a number of books on social media, marketing, and thought leadership. Why this book? Why now? You know, that's a good question. I'm, you know what? And I'm, I'm just I'm starting off my tour now, so I need to figure out how I'm going to answer <laughs> this question. I mean, there's a lot of different variables that happen. Number one, um, it wrote itself, right? The fact mm. that I've done so many episodes, uh, I had so much content to put out, and I realized what the Ask Gary V show on YouTube was doing for me was it was allowing me to find different things about myself and bring <clears throat> different things to people that I hadn't historically done. Right. And so even if you look at the subtitle, self-awareness is not something I've been talking about yeah. or not something that's been associated with me. Until recently. Right, and and yeah. it's and what what's happened is this book more so, probably the most since Crush It, is a more 360 view. Thank You Economy was very narrow to this, you know, kind of like new world we lived in where if you give, you get, things of that nature. Jab Jab was basically a textbook. Like yeah. literally, like I didn't even do an audio book because right. it was all pictures and dissecting content on the internet. This, I talk about parenthood. I talk about, mm. you know, being a leader. You know, I've, I, you know, and you know this, I've built two actual businesses. Right. A bricks and mortar e-commerce wine business that I grew from three to 60 million and now a digital social agency, modern day Mad Men company that I've grown from three to 100 million in revenue in, in four years. And I knew that there was more than I was giving about how I did that. Th mm. That was one of the reasons I started the Ask Gary V show. It felt like the right thing to make a book out of. And yeah. the truth is it's a self-fulfilling prophecy too because the book itself is gonna lead to awareness around the show and it just becomes yeah. this one cycle. So That's why I did my book, you know, yeah. it's like building around the podcast. And it's a both very, very similar uh, situation to what you did with your book. And the truth is, and I wonder how you think about this, I do think I will sell less books. Um, and yours, you know, look, yours is, even though it's about you and you're hardcore on the cover, I'm looking at it right now, <laughs> it's still called The School of Greatness. Right. Mine is literally called Ask Gary V, yeah. right? And so, I do think that will make it narrow. Mm. Uh, you know, to me, what I wrote is the modern entrepreneurial blueprint, mm. and that's what it is. And I think if it was called the modern entrepreneurial blueprint, a lot of people at an airport or Barnes and Noble would buy it. Would buy it. Yeah. Now it's like, who's this dude? Fuck this dude. Right. You know. So I think word of mouth is what's going to take this book to a different place. So far, I've been flabbergasted. I mean, literally two people who do not like me. This is, there's just nothing else to say. There are people who think I have too much ego or I'm too loud or I'm too much for them in media who got galleys from my publisher who I'd never send galleys to because I wouldn't even want to disrespect them because I know they don't love my <laughs> right, shtick. Right. Loved it. Wow. And so I think it has a chance to be a big one for me. I wish I could see it right now. I know I'm a dick, right? <laughs> Sorry. It's such a huge you'll send, me, you'll send me another galaxy. <laughs> you're like, hey. You're like, where is it? I'm like, uh. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all good. Um, speaking of entrepreneurship, I've got a lot of people asking questions that wanted to ask you questions um, from my social media. And one of them was about the recent video that you posted on entrepreneurship where you said it can't be taught. Yes. What do you mean by that? I, so I need to be I need to be smart about I have to go look back and how we titled it, mm -hmm. um, but I know what I said, which is it can be taught, but you can only go so far because of natural talent. You know, it's fun to have this conversation with you because you're such an athletic freak. Um, you know, most people don't lay on the couch and say I'm going to be on an Olympic team and then pull it <laughs> off. Um, you know, look, I think that I could play basketball every day, every day of my life from the time I was 15 and put in 15 hours a day. And I think I'd be really good. I'd have a much better handle. I'd be, I'd, I'd shoot better. Right. I would have been more competitive with you at, on the boat that day. <laughs> right, right. Um, but would I have been good enough to be in the NBA? Absolutely no. not. Maybe maybe D3. Maybe. College. Maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe. And I do think right now that everybody thinks they can be an entrepreneur. Mm. And so my point was, it's, it's much more talent than the current conversation. 
I don't think you can read the School of Greatness and my books and all these other books and watch Skillshares and watch Chase mm-hmm. Jarvis and listen to Ferris and and read Branson and 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 even go to business school and and all and have mentors and go to Y Combinator and then all of a sudden just because of that you become a great entrepreneur. I think of it like the music industry. Think about all the kids that are born into, you know, your Clive Davis's grandson or your Whitney Houston's daughter or mm-hmm. you have nothing but access, you're in the studio all the time, you learn the business, but if you don't have the chops, if you don't have the vocals, you're right. only going to go so far. Right. Same I mean, thing with football players or like in, in athletics too. You see some uh, children of former absolutely. NBA or NFL stars who excel, but then others who are don't do anything. Here's the punchline. <laughs> It's much more talent than people realize. Mm. I see it every day and the video I made was like, look, you have to be okay that by pouring in 18 hours a day and learning everything might only l- allow you to build a <clears throat> business that makes $100,000 a year. Right. There is an absolute misconception that the American dream is entrepreneurship and everybody can do it. Everybody, the difference between entrepreneurship and football is everybody who's listening right now or watching can start a business. Not everybody can go work out for the New York Yankees. There's right. a system. There's no system in place for entrepreneurship. Anyone that, can do it. That Yeah, at 16 or 22 stops you and says, hey man, you're gonna lose a shitload of money <laughs> right. and be miserable. And, and literally, the, you know, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm starting this conversation for quite a noble reason. This is not me to impose my will and say, look how special I am. As a matter of fact, I'd rather think it's been the hard work than the talent. You know, I'd rather think it was something I did versus mom and dad had sex at the right moment. Mm. I'd much rather think that. The reason I'm going down this path is there's a recent phenomenon that's not being talked enough about in our culture and specifically in our world, which is what failure is doing to the young men and women in our space. And, you know, we're sweeping under the rug a couple of the suicides in our space. We're sweeping under the rug the heavy depression and alcohol use. We're sweeping things under the rug. We wanna show all the hoopla. I hate what's going on on Instagram right now. Everybody living their fake life, mm. putting up pictures of like baby giraffes and like hot <laughs> chicks and, and $50,000 cash on a bed mm-hmm. and, and a boat and painting a lifestyle that is not realistic. And, and I, I wanna have this conversation because I think that I have a big enough voice to start the conversation mm. about, look, this, there is a level of talent here and what we need to all be doing is figuring out what we're best at and going all in on that. And by the way, do you know how much, do you know how much more money the number two, seven, 15, 44th person at Facebook has than you and I? Billions. Billions. Yeah. So... I'm a little bit disappointed in a lot of ways. One, people that are bottom feeding and like mm. signing up for every ebook and mastermind and course and they're, and they're not talented enough and they're chasing a lottery ticket and they're gonna get depressed and get sick. Mm. Or great kids that have tons of talent who would have been great number fours and made tens of millions of dollars and had work-life balance who are being pressured into becoming the next Mark Zuckerberg and are gonna fail multiple times in a startup and not really start becoming that executive until they're 32, 33, 34 and learn some things but be behind the ball in a world that they could have been successful for. There's absolutely a ton of kids right now that would have been better off being kids that were in their 20s and 30s and 80s and 90s because mm-hmm. they would have been consultants and COOs and CFOs and had an incredible life and instead they're only gonna get really started at 32, 33 and they'll win a lot of experience and they'll have hopefully a lot of fun but unfortunately I know a lot of B's and I know a lot of twos mm-hmm. and that's not for their makeup either. So for me, like, you know, I have to do this. Yeah. I've been, you know, it's why I was failed school. It's why I sold baseball cards when I was 14. So for me, I'm okay with the failures, the losses along the way. It's my natural state. I just want people who are listening to find their natural state and not force into the current narrative. So how does someone find out what they're best at? And what are you best at? You know, I'm best at selling. I'm yeah. best at using my words to make things happen. Whether that's selling me, whether that's selling my agency, whether that's selling a bottle of wine, whether that's selling a book, I'm mm-hmm. good at that. Yeah. I'm good at storytelling yeah. to make a transaction happen. Um, how one finds it, you know, I don't know. And I think about this a lot. I think about self-awareness, I think about EQ, I think about finding that. I've been talking more about finding the five people that are closest to you to tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to tell Have you- Have you done that? 
have I done it for myself or yeah, for other people? Yeah, you found five people. Or... I, I don't feel like I needed it, but I could be wrong. Mm. But, I, but I feel like, um, you know, the truth with me, especially, you know meditation's about to explode, right? I'm probably saying this. It's already been exploding, yeah. yeah. But it's about to become Starbucks and SoulCycle. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'm probably saying this just because I need a recall in three years to say I told you so. So <laughs> uh, you're going to get some traffic to this episode <laughs> from me in four years. Meditation is going to go very mainstream, mm-hmm. right? Like everybody will go to meditation. There's already a studio here in LA that's Of course, just LA and New York, it's just happening. Yeah. It's, it's four years from now, it will be just like working out. Headspace, all these hundred percent, 100%. Where was it going? Oh, Sorry. I'm scared to get into it because I'm so goddamn happy that I'm scared that if I meditate, it's going to open up another path in my brain that may lead to something that isn't what I have right now. That's why I'm also not trying to explore more self-awareness. Give me feedback. Give me I don't feedback. need it. Yeah, yeah. I, like I'm so goddamn happy. I'm scared <laughs> to like fuck with it. You don't want to mess with it. Yeah, no. it's already working for you. Um, so let's talk about work-life balance. Yes. You mentioned that with you know the the twos and the bees and everything. A um, bunch of people ask this question. I'll right. just kind of paraphrase yeah. it. How are and I'm sure you've been answering this a lot. But how does work-life balance work for you? Uh, and essentially, when you're doing all these daily V's now from 5 a.m. working out till 12.30 a.m., 15, 20-hour days. This daily V vlog has been an interesting thing in my life for two reasons. Number one, the ego part of me. I'm so fucking pumped that I'm finally establishing that nobody's outworking me. Like, people like you're you- you're documenting it now. People like yeah. you, like, my inner, like people that were either in my inner circle or really knew who I was yeah. or have spent some time with me, you know, you know, because you would email Matt DeMeo or Nate back mm-hmm. in the day or Phil mm-hmm. Toronto, and they would say, cool, can you meet from 11.15 to 11.19 <laughs> yeah. on what, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so my friends or people that I was closer to or businesses, they kind of over the last four or five years figured it out. I'm so pumped that the market right. is starting to understand. On the flip side, it has brought up a lot of questions about my work-life balance because what's happened in parallel is like, wait a minute. This guy really is working six to eleven thirty every day. When the hell does he have time for his family? I mm-hmm. couldn't do that. This seems extreme. Is this healthy? Like, mm-hmm. how does this end up? Twofold. Number one, my work life balance is the way everyone's work life balance is, which is everybody has their own version. I feel like it's very similar to parenting. Mm-hmm. I would never give people parenting advice. You can see in my book. Um, I talk about parenting, but I hedge every answer, which is like, you do you. By the way, this is what I'm doing. Right. You do you. Like, <laughs> the thought of telling people how to parent is insane. You have no context. You know, listen, I have empathy that most people don't have context for Lizzie and I's relationship. They don't understand her independence. They don't understand that she also is emphatic that she and the kids are not involved in any of my public domain. So, you know, if you watch I mean, my... You don't talk about that's that. That's right. If you watch them. Snap and my Snapchat stories and my Daily V carefully, and by the way, I recommend this for nobody because nobody should watch me that carefully, but you can see where there's hours of blocks of time. You know, there is nothing going on on the weekends. The You know, there's these... You know, I was thinking about it the other day. Uh, two Fridays ago, you know, I was gone at noon with the kids mm-hmm. and spending a ton of time all day. We went away together a little bit. There was no content, but because of that... You know, I'm painting a picture. I'm controlling my story. You're never showing that you're with your family. or yeah. I'm not showing it. And I'd love to in some ways because I think it'd be cool to document it for the kids one day. But I don't want to make the decision for them to be public. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, look, my work life balance is more extreme than 99% of people. I recognize that. For now, and that's the important part, right. for now, it's working for my wife and I and family. I don't think it's sustainable. I don't even want it. My kids are six and three now. They're starting to become real. Six and three, man. I remember when the first one was born. Mm -hmm. We're getting old, brother. Uh, It's crazy. um, You know, I don't want to miss stuff. I haven't. Any time I'm in New York, I'm not missing any recital or things of that nature. But if there's one today, I'm missing it. I'm in LA, right? right? Um, And it's a constant process. But yes, uh, I'm working a lot. What would you say uh, percentage-wise of spending time with family every week versus work? is you know 80 20 uh let's see so two days a week is of seven you know so that's 30 i mean it's probably 65 35 70 30 Mm -hmm. work yeah um but that's only because i'm all in on the weekends and um and over this next kind of six seven week period because i'm doing a lot of stuff for the book there's some saturdays that i'll miss here and there so you know it can be 60 
It could be 70, 30, 75, 25 during a normal week. But I'm also taking about six to seven weeks vacation. Right. That's 100% really? family. Mm-hmm. Wow. Two weeks in August, two weeks in December when everybody shut down. Sure. And then usually two, a week in you know March for spring break and a week in June or July. Right. So I'm taking a lot more vacation time than I used to. I'm up from two weeks. So listen, I'm like everybody who's <laughs> listening right now. I'm doing the best that I can. Yeah. I, I, I need everybody to understand this. If I didn't do what came naturally to me, it, there'd be much bigger problems. You'd be miserable. That's right. You'd be miserable. You'd be thinking. You wouldn't be present when you're there with your family either. Probably. And I and I and I challenge a lot of people to understand that when they're there with their family, a lot of you are coming home at five o'clock, but you're also going to the bowling team. You're also playing Halo. You're also like watching TV. You're watching TV, and the kids are on the iPad. Mm-hmm. So what I'm trying to do is maximize the attention time when I'm there not only just the physical time. And mm. so, look, I don't think I'm crushing it. I don't think I I don't think I'm right for most people. You know, I think I'm very affected by the fact that my dad wasn't around until I was 14 and that meant I worked at the store and got to see mm. him. So I I lived in an extreme work-life balance scenario that I grew up with, which right. probably gives me comfort. I was talking to one of my buddies whose dad was home at five o'clock every night and it's foreign to him. And so I, I have empathy for that. My wife also grew up with a dad that was constantly away mm. and was building his career. So she's used to it. So I know that we mix that way, that mm-hmm. works. If my if I married a woman whose dad was home at five, I'm sure there'd be more tension. If I had a dad that was home at five every day, or mom, you know, if, if they were working, then I'm sure I wouldn't be comfortable with it. But I think the circumstances of our lives have created our situation, and I think that we're dramatically happier than a lot of people that spend 80% of their time together. Right. And so, you know, you fight for it. Mm-hmm. And when you're with your family, are you ever on your phone? Are you thinking about business, or do you it, allow yourself no, to shut off? I mean, I would be. I'm desperately trying for 100% attention. Yeah. I'm probably achieving 80. Yeah. Um, which is better than 50, which is where I was probably three years ago. Right. So chipping away, and on vacation, I've gotten to 100, mm-hmm. which is why those have become very special things. We also bought a summer home now, and I'm hoping that really? I can hack into more time that way. Is that upstate New York or something? Uh, in the Hamptons. Oh, nice. And okay. so it's a little bougie, but <laughs> yeah, it's super fucking cliche. <laughs> um, so, but that's a great story. Yeah. We tried not to buy in the Hamptons because I was worried that I'd be in the work zone. Uh-huh. Last year, we went on a kind of four-year tour different places. Last year, first day, we're in the Hamptons. First day, I walk to the market with my, my little guy. I run into the guy that runs Pinterest mm. in New York. Four-minute conversation leads to business. It was only four minutes. I walk back home and I go to Lizzie, let's buy here. And, and, and uh. because it's, you know, in that whole summer, I probably spent... Six percent of my time I work. A couple of breakfasts, a couple, of, you know, dinner, a couple of things. If you, so, I'll call that a fifty-fifty. But mm-hmm. I'd call six percent as the sure. net score, and I needed that six percent. You can't look, my friends. You can't run away from who you are. Mm-hmm. You can try to mold yourself into a politically correct world, and luckily, we're way beyond. Well, not way beyond. This is unfair. But I'm glad that the world is now focusing on other variables. We'll always have race and religion and sexism and those things, but now we're leveling up even into like what's a modern dad and like you know what fit work-life balance and things of that nature. Look, I know the optics. I know I'm living a public persona. I know I have to answer these questions. Look how many work-life questions you got. Mm-hmm. I'd like to be politically correct. I'd like to be perfect. I'd like to make it easy on myself to not have to deal with the stress of the optics on the outside. Here is the punchline problem. You can't run away from who you are. You can't. And so I'm fucking ambitious mm-hmm. like I want it and I want it real bad why I'm not sure you know I was born an immigrant I'm not super tall um, <laughs> you know I like losing I like I like I like the, what happens to my testosterone and my mm-hmm. energy when I take a loss it gets me more motivated I love you should play ping pong more often <laughs> <laughs> I love my legacy mm-hmm. you know I, I want to be remembered as a good dude and somebody who did it right I I'm 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 I feel the pressure of my talent I know I have something and I feel like equal gratitude as I do pressure to execute against it. Mm. I'm, I'm aware, I'm aware that I'm different. And it would be such a, I, I want, I, look I lived 22 to 30 building a big business but I wasn't doing outrageously special things and I felt it. I You're knew it. You're consistently growing something. I was building a business. I'm super yeah. proud of that. I'm pumped that I didn't come out and become a pundit and a talking head at 22 and all these 18 year old life coaches on Instagram. Like, I'm not into that. So I'm glad I had that meat and potatoes to come yeah. out and say, look, I built this. This had nothing to do with books or speeches or personal brand. This was a business I built. I was 32 years old before I said anything about business to the world. Yeah. I have a lot of pride in that. At the same token, while I was in it, I knew there was more. Mm. I knew there was this Gary Vee thing. 
I knew that there was bigger and better and all time stuff and so you know, it's a seesaw of trying to find your cadence and I think one of the things that I would tell a lot of people who are listening and I know you have a young crew, mm-hmm. I see a lot of, you know, and when I say young, I mean under 40. It's stunning and not, look, I'm 40, you, you could be 46, and it's a mindset but I, here's where I'm going with it. It's stunning how much time you have to pull it off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When were you on the couch and your sister's how old? 24. You know what I mean? A lot yeah. of There's a lot of 24-year-olds listening yeah. right now. And I have that nothing, are, you know. Right, and they're confused. They're like, well, you know, I need to do it and this and that. And so I think um, I think that uh, I, I think I love life and I think that I don't want to die. And I think the only mm. way that I know how not to die is to leave a big-time legacy. This is interesting. Jarek Robbins, I think yes. you know, he said um, – but what if he got to the end of the journey in life and on the very last day figured out he was dead wrong? It just makes you put things in perspective. Truth is, no one actually knows. I'd be curious to hear what his response is. It's a great question. I will tell you that if my DNA continues to go the way it goes, I'm not capable of, of crying about spilled milk. Mm-hmm. And if I'm laying on my deathbed one day to go and I say, fuck, you know, I should have been a stay-at-home dad or shit, I should have invested in Uber <laughs> in the angel round when I said no. Did you have two opportunities for that? Let's not talk about it. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, what are those things? Um, oh, I got a picture to show you. Check out this picture of Travis at the Super Bowl with Woody Johnson. Let's see, Travis who? Travis Kalkin, founder, okay. uh, the CEO of, oh, of yeah. Uber. Gotcha. One of my best buds. There's a picture of him with Woody Johnson, and it says, you're out of the deal. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and the scary part is my homie Travis can fucking actually buy the Jets. Wow. Um, so that kind of shit motivates me, right? Yeah. Travis is my buddy in Crush It. Travis is like traveling around with me to my keynotes just hanging out. Really? In between his gigs, angel investing, right? And now he's like one of the four or five most prominent technology CEOs and one of the wealthiest on paper. Crazy. What's and he worth now? <laughs> well, what's Uber out, 80 billion, way. so 80 he's billion. probably, I mean, he's got to be 10, 12, 7, 9, I mean, something just mind-boggling. And, you know, that's motivating. This is my homie who, you know, who I acknowledge and crush it. The only person I acknowledge besides my family. Wow. And asked me to invest in this company, and I'm an investor, and I passed twice an angel at 4 million. Why? Stupid stuff. I just bought a new apartment. I was super not liquid. I was using my own money mm. back then. And Travis and Garrett, who found it, weren't going to run it. And I was doing a lot of side projects that weren't working at the time. And so just one of those things, right? Yeah. Like, like I just missed it. Anyway, um, yeah, I just, I just, um, I'm just living life like everybody else. I just, uh, I just uh, want to squeeze that orange harder than mm. most people. You know, you're, you're so good at investing and predicting what's going to be big. You've been talking about Snapchat, what I want to dive into in a second, but how come you haven't started your own app, your own social, you know, like Snapchat I'm or go- Uber or something I'm, like that? I'm good at knowing what I'm good at. Yeah. You know, self-awareness. Yeah. I think I have it. I don't think I'm Travis or Zucks or, right. you know, Ev or, you know, any of the Kevin Systrom. I don't have a drive in my stomach to create a product. There's a couple that I've thought of, but for now, I still think I can get around to it. Mm. Um, I'm feeling good about what I'm doing right now. I'm building VaynerMedia to be a machine for me for the rest of my life. How many how many employees? Six hundred. It's crazy. I remember I mean, going in your first office with like four of you. Yeah. In New York. That's right. And so I'm proud of that. You know, it's a hundred million dollar business. I mean, look, crazy. I told AJ the other day, I'm like, VaynerMedia is going to end up being the by accident billion dollar company. You know, mm-hmm. I right now have nothing but my health stopping me from building a billion dollar agency, hmm. which is wild. You know. That's kind of weird yeah. to me that in 10 years, if I don't want to do anything else and if I don't get distracted 10 years from today, I mean, probably sooner, which is scary. Company's probably worth $300 million right now. Mm. And I know most people that follow me carefully don't realize that. There's a funny, uh, there's a funny uh, Google result of what, my, the second search on me is what's my net worth. Mm. And there's one of these cockamanian sites that's, that says it's $10 million, right? And so... I laugh at that because people tweet about that quite a bit and ask me like, why am I doing so poorly? And then I, I try to remind them, I'm like, guys, how in the world do you think my net worth is $10 million when 
you know, like they, they like add up all the conversations of the businesses and they, like I'm always confused by how people don't like it's stunning what people will believe. Mm-hmm. Some random like SEO based <laughs> website <laughs> right, right. that's hacking people's names is their belief. Meanwhile, they know I co own a sixty million dollar business, mm-hmm. which in that world is probably worth anywhere between forty and eighty. You could probably sell wine library for a little less its revenue a little bit more right so that's 20 to 40 the property wine library is on is worth 10 and it's like I've I've been stunned to learn I guess I'm not going there with humble bragging or and or clarification I'm going there with people just don't understand business Mm. like people like I don't know like I'm sure you've had people say oh that's how many books you sold you made like they don't even think about that you don't get all that like somebody once said to me like a dollar yeah they're like oh you sold all these I'm like don't you know there's a publisher don't you know there's like like it's just people's basic business knowledge is interesting to me Mm. and um and just it's just an interesting time right so why uh, heavily vested in you're the one who got me on a snapchat I was on there like a year before you told me for like a couple weeks I didn't get it and then you said at the dinner with Jim Quick, you were like, you got to get on there. And I'm really grateful I did because I sold a ton of books through it and it's been really helpful for me. Attention. I no. will go down in history as somebody who understood consumer attention. What am I good at? Not only am I good at telling you a story to get you to do something, regardless of if mm. I'm doing it for myself, my client, whatever, I'm really good at understanding where to find you to tell you that story. Mm-hmm. And I'm really good at understanding when there's not a lot of other voices trying to get you to buy something. That is my narrative. Right. 1996 e-commerce site, nobody was doing it. 1997 email service, 90% open rates, nobody was doing email marketing. Right. Google AdWords, five cents a click. YouTube, these are, and then the YouTube part is fun because everybody who's listening right now can go watch episode one of Wine Library TV, which you know was February of 2006, which is less than a year after YouTube was out. Wow. And to make everybody understand the internet 10 years ago, people were still not on it. Yeah. And they were definitely not looking for the next cool thing. And so, and then Twitter, and then you know Facebook, and Instagram. then Instagram. And Instagram. Instagram was a little bit slower on, yeah. truthfully. We did a marketing campaign 11 days after Instagram came out. I'm not good at taking pictures, and that was a platform that was hard for me to like really get going. I finally got serious about it when I rebooted my personal brand 18 months ago. Yeah. You know, I was real quiet in between, you know, probably 11 to 14. Like for me, there's not a lot of content. Right, 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 right. There's not a lot of content. There was Thank You Economy is my least selling book because I didn't promote it very heavily. Yeah. Um, and uh, but Snapchat, I'm gonna end up being very right about. It's been fun because I didn't realize how. And I kind of gave you daps for this and several others. I kind of did an interview the other day, and, and everyone's like, "Why are you getting so like you made everybody go on Snapchat that weren't like that wasn't on it? Kids are that." And I said, "You know, it's not that my brand is that big. It's really not. It's that so many people." that have followed me the last five to seven years, they've gotten big. Mm-hmm. You've gotten big. Yeah. Other people have gotten big and they have do- and they know that I'm right because they've been with it. It's, we're all attracting more people. On. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's interesting. Because I think you said, I think I saw one of your videos where you said you get 25,000 views on Snapchat right now. Mm-hmm. Is that about right? I'm about 27 to eight, to thir- yeah. almost 30 now, finally. It's huge. I'm at like 2,000 on a good day and I'm like, but it's still really powerful. Those 2,000 views are so much more powerful than well, whatever. Lewis, Lewis, Nate Westheimer, a good friend of mine. You know Nate? I'm not sure. Um, so. Really good guy from the early tech days, uh, New York guy. When I had 5,000 face Twitter followers, 5,000 in 2007, eight, and we were at South by 2008, I think, and I said, follow my friend Nate, a thousand people crazy. followed. It's crazy. A thousand. Crazy. And so now I have 1.2 million. If I said, follow my homie you get Lewis, like 20 maybe. you get like 18, yeah. 34. <laughs> so. You know, it's a noise ratio thing. Yeah, yeah. And Snapchat has attention right now at scale. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's a Snapchat, Instagram world with Facebook still being really the world, mm-hmm. but you've got to do paid. Mm-hmm. And so from an organic reach standpoint, for everybody who's listening to Build, it's an it's an absolute Instagram, Snapchat world. Yeah, and even just your, your buddy, your... your fitness trainer what's his Mike. name Mike yeah he's, he's even, exploded he's building his business more on Snapchat with probably he's freaking out 500 views he's freaking out $400 a month for his virtual yeah. fitness thing and Snapchat's becoming the most important thing yeah he couldn't believe it and this is I yelled at him on Gen, at CS January 4th he wow. started getting serious where, where are we six weeks in yeah and, and making, more than SEO more than email more than Facebook ads yeah. Snapchat is driving it's crazy mm-hmm. it's amazing um Lewis, you should probably get even a little bit more serious about it. Like, when I think about how many people listen to this podcast, mm-hmm. 
you need to think about throwing this extreme right hook maybe in this episode or, or make me doing a Snapchat only episode. Like, you've got to be able to get another five to 8,000 people yeah. out of this listenership to follow you guys. Yeah. Follow Gary VEE on Snapchat. I'll, I'll make sure to get that linked up too. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been promoting it more and more. It's just, uh, I don't know. I have some of these, <laughs> these big YouTuber friends, they get like half a million views on Snapchat. You're yeah. just like, how is this well, even possible? You know, they're, they're doing that because their audience is younger yeah. and into that kind of content. Yeah. Us business or motivation or life it's stuff, different. we're never going to have those kind of audiences. What I'm proud of though is the impact. But is they're extreme. buyers too and they're, Oh, they're I mean, incredible. I mean, listen, I wish I was 16 years old with light blue eyes and every <laughs> teenage girl in America like me too. Or I wish I was yeah, a yeah. straight 10 chick and, <laughs> right. and like could my Smoking body was on. Body. Yeah, 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 I mean like, I mean, I mean okay, being yeah. a hot girl is like my dream. I wish that's who I was <laughs> when I grew up. You know, like that's leverage for days. Yeah. Like, I know exactly what to do with that. Um, you know, but uh, you know, that's just not our truth. <laughs> yeah. What do you think is going to be the best platform for you selling books with this new book coming out? What's... What do you think is going to be? Because I saw you doing the Instagram, a really good snap a photo, Snapchat, Facebook. Um, What's going to sell the most? Influencers. Getting other influencers Homies. to promote. Yeah. Podcasts and other promotion. Yep. Podcasts, yeah. as we all know, are doing extremely well. That's why I'm here, yep. hustling. And like I know there's 20 to 40% of your audience, especially with your growth, that has never heard of me. And, yeah. and, and as much as we're all out there, you still find pockets, and yeah. I'm excited about that. Hello, everybody who I've never met before. Number two, um, I'm very hot on this Instagram book review thing I'm gonna do. I I'm, saw you promoting that. I'm gonna day. be very aggressive about this. Basically, all my friends that I think are not gonna buy 20 to 400 books, and you know, I think that was one of the best pieces of advice I gave you, which yeah. is just go in the fuck for the fucking ask. Yeah, which I did and sold, I don't know, got around 10,000 pre orders just from asking people. Huge, right? Yeah, yeah it was huge. You just go in for it and you tell got them, and you to. make them feel safe, like, hey, homie. You know, I know we're best out, friends. No I know I've done you nine favors, but you can't do it. Cool. You might yeah, not yeah. be liquid. You might not want to do it. Right, you know, right. I don't know. So I don't. As long as you're capable of not being disappointed that somebody you've done a lot for doesn't buy any, yep. you do it. But for everybody else who's not going to do that, I'm going to push very hardly for hard for a very real Instagram book review picture of the book. That's powerful. It's I been, think so. It's been huge for me because a lot of people are still tagging me every day that they're reading the book and then I just see the comments of people like, oh, I should go buy that book or I should check it out. And it's just, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force that yeah, in big. the same way that, so I would say what you're doing with that is the pre-model that I came up with which was you send an email blast to everybody and say, look, I never do that. You know, you remember those? Yeah. yeah. The email is, I never normally do this but this book really means a lot to me and da, da, da. And what that did was it gave everybody permission to not do. Mm. That's what I think having serendipitous book reviews on Instagram is right now. I'm going to go out and actually fundamentally have 700 to 1,400 people leave a substantial review. And what's cool about that is a person who has 297 people following them on Instagram, 150 of them are really going to consume it. Mm -hmm. Whereas that same friend has 11,000 Twitter followers and like four are gonna really consume it. Maybe. And this is why Twitter has a problem. Yeah. It's not about width, it's about depth. It's not how many you reach, it's how many you touch with it. Yeah, okay, health and fitness. We got about 15 minutes before okay. I, I know you gotta bounce. Um, why did you invest, I think it was like 15 or 18 months ago you started investing in your health? Now I've always seen the importance of training like a pro athlete in business because I feel like it's what gives me my edge. It gives me my competitiveness, keeps me sharp, keeps me confident. I have like that momentum every single day, but why did you decide that it was important? And also, how have you seen the benefits and the results in business? Has it translated since? I'll you answer number two, yep. zero. Mm -hmm. And it's like the answer that nobody wants me to give, but it's the truth because I had the energy before. Right. You know, the, I, I had the sharpness. I just don't see it. I have not seen it. It doesn't feel different. Number one's the more interesting question. And, and, and but before you go on yeah. number one, would it in twenty years? Of course, that's the answer. Would you have the energy? Of course, that's the answer. I'm, I am successful in business because I don't give a fuck about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I care about thirty six months from now, fifty two months from now, eighty three months from now. Yeah. When everybody's when everybody who's our contemporary is saying now, Gary, Snapchat, what like? I'm like, cool, you're judging Snapchat right this second. Mm -hmm. You haven't started doing it, mm -hmm. or you just started and you only have 187 people watching your stories. Yeah, you're going to where the puck's gonna be. 100%. Yeah. You know, you're not worried about 2022 when your email service and your Twitter account aren't relevant, mm -hmm. and what are you gonna do? Right. So, 
I'm definitely in a place where at 38 and a half, I'm on this random flight. I like how I'm saying 38 and a half. Uh, 38 and a half, I'm on this random flight. I'm just laying there, not feeling tired, not feeling lethargic, no cliche thing, no heartburn that I think I'm getting a heart attack, nothing. <laughs> I'm just laying there and I'm saying, you know, if I treated my health the way I treated businesses, I'd win. And so I just started, actually I remember what happened because I was like, that's not, doesn't feel right. I was thinking about my 40th birthday and I was thinking, you know, at 30, I changed my life. I went from the executor to, I need to go for it. If I don't do from 30 to 40, it's not gonna happen. So mm. let me go for it in that decade. And I was like, what am I gonna do at 40? Weirdly, I don't feel the same pressure I did at 30. I think I'm on a better career path. Like, I don't feel the angst to like, it didn't feel right to triple down on work. <laughs> and so I said, health. Health is nowhere close to where it should be. Mm. I'm not, I'm, I'm, the way I make fun of people in business, you're not doing anything right that's gonna help you long term, I'm not doing anything right with health. When I turn 40, I'm gonna get serious. So then a week later I'm on a flight, again, (laughs) flights made me think, and I'm like, the fuck am I waiting to 40 for? Mm. I could do a lot of bad in this next 18 months. 39, in November, this is around May, Mm -hmm. and in November I'm gonna go for it. And literally the next morning I'm like, why? (laughs) And I literally called Mike, yeah. And who was did my John, last did trainer. John connect you to did Mike I hit, did, you know, did I call yes, John originally did, Roman. Uh and then did I call Roman and ask him for a kid? No, I called Mike. I called mm-hmm. Mike and I said, Mike, do you have a kid who you think would follow me around twenty four seven for two years, sign up, I'll pay him out. He's my personal, personal food, workout. And he's like, What well, what about me? I'm like, but don't you aren't you doing too much money, like isn't it going too well? And he said, yeah, but it's worth it. I mean, mm. what's ha- his strategy in this was huge. Yeah. He got paid a lot of money and his business is 5 x There you go, the online business. He sat at VaynerMedia and just watched all the behavior. I mean, he should have fucking paid me. Mike, you should have fucking paid me. <laughs> I'm, this next person I'm hiring is gonna do me and my wife wow. and is gonna get paid a lot less because I know I'm gonna help him build a business. Right, right. And the third person I might just make it, like a barter and the fourth person I might actually make them pay me right that's interesting because someone asked a question um, what would it take for someone to work with you at VaynerMedia and to be close to you throughout all the time you know there's an eight person Gary team for yeah. content and biz dev and all that uh, that's the closest thing mm-hmm. either one of my assistants you know, I'm about to go to two assistants so one, yeah. my assistant or that eight person team the truth is it's been complete serendipity the way it's really worked is they've either been a fan of me or not, gone into Vayner, worked there a year, out hustled everybody and had talent and then caught my eye and then I brought them into my inner team. So that's the answer. You gotta go work at Vayner. Put your time in. A ton of fans have come to work to Vayner, mainly just to get close to me and sucked and I lost a lot of equity with them immediately mm-hmm. and they've lost. A lot of people interested in me have come fall in love with the business and don't even want to be part of my team and want to do that. Yeah. And there's been people that have come in and have joined my team. Right. Uh, what's your biggest weakness or the thing you're trying to overcome lately? I think my weakness will end up being too much patience. You know, I can be a lot richer. I can be a lot more powerful. I'm always hedging. I'm always hedging. I'm pushing. I'm always worried about where the puck's going instead right. of, at times when I went to where the puck was going and I got there, I didn't squeeze it hard enough. Mm-hmm. Can you give me an example? YouTube. I was so right, but then I left it. You went to Vidler, right? Exactly. Is Vidler even around right now? No. I, yes, but no. Right. I uh, Email marketing. I could have met much harder. Google AdWords. Mm-hmm. I was so right. And that's why I've really squeezed social much harder because yeah. I learned from Digital 1.0 um, all the mistakes I meant by leaving too early. So the global version of that Back to Jarek's question is mm-hmm. at 85, 90, the one thing I will say is I didn't throw enough right hooks. And I, if I don't get what I want, I'm gonna blame it on not going in for the close mm. as much as I could have. Mm. How do you judge uh, how much you're closing if it's too much or if you're- Intuition, right yeah, yeah, just my gut, right? If people are reacting and like, yeah. oh, they're, they're not- and, and I get so mad when I go in for the right hooks like this book right now, there's people like, Oh, Gary, throwing way too many right hooks. You're starting to become spammy. I'm like, dude, for the last two years, I've put out nothing but content for free. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I understand in this 45-day promotion period, it's gonna feel like a little much. Yes. It's a global right hook. Consider the next 90 days a right hook. Yes. And if I'm not interesting, unfollow me, tune me out. I'll be back to your regular yeah. scheduled program. 
<laughs> in July where you're getting nothing but content for yeah. me for free while you're paying some fucking douchebag 180 bucks for his ebook or $10,000 a year for a mastermind right, where right. they tell you nothing. I'm giving you true fucking <laughs> value and advice for free. Sorry I'm asking you for an $18 book, dick. I know. It's like 15 on Amazon, right? It's, like, it's interesting because when my book came out, you know, I've been doing this podcast for two and a half years before the book came out. Three episodes a week, just producing content, spending money on a you know a video person, editing it. It's like only for free, and I didn't even have sponsors the first couple of years, and and I did the same thing. I was like, okay, for thirty or forty five days, I want to push this hard. But people said the same thing. I'm like, I give you so much for free. And listen, by the way, they're right. Not me and you. You and I are crying right now. Mm. They're the market. Mm-hmm. They're right. Right. I just have gotten to a place where I'm like, look. Fuck it. Like I, I'm willing to take that loss with that individual because I've been through four or five rodeos now. Mm-hmm. I know that they'll come back because my value's too much. Yeah. Like truth is it's just too valuable. Like, cool, but like it's just too valuable. Yeah. In a world where where a lot of people just made a lot of money by following my blueprint on Snap. Do you know how many people literally watch everything I say and then create $200 programs and run Facebook ads of like, and they're experts on Snapchat and literally, literally, I have a message from them on Snapchat from five and a half weeks ago that says, you really think this is gonna be big? Literally, literally I can name two people right now that I have an an email, like the Snap message from saying, you really think so? Or the second guy's really funny. I don't see it is his first Snapchat message to me. Right now, running Facebook ads for his $300 Snapchat blueprint book and making bank. Making bank. Running them against people that are fans of me and my fans are falling for it Mm. and then yelling at me for asking for an $18 book. Right. When I'm, the, I mean, just the whole thing's so fucked. Why, why haven't you ever gotten to creating online courses and teaching these strategies? You know what? I'm, and making, and I'm, leveraging that. you know, I just did something you, Udemy and, and Udemy. I've done something, yep, yeah, Udemy, excuse me, see yeah. exactly how much I'm paying attention to it. Right. Uh, I see and, their ads all over Instagram for you. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I'm letting some of the platforms take free money for me uh, because I, because I think four or five years ago, Online courses were done by the lowest of the low, and I didn't want the association. Now they're a lot more professional with Creative Live. A lot Live more. And creative and... Live. Chase is doing a great job. Yes. Skillshare. So I'm not against it. Yeah. I'm not against it. I'm, and honestly, if I have a really bad experience and too many people get upset about me going right hook, I'll just shut the whole fucking thing down and go only paid. Right. And then, and then, and then see how much they like the alternative of getting everything <laughs> for fucking free every right. day. Right. And now having to pay a hundred bucks a month to get access to it. Yeah. And they won't cry about the $18 book as much. Sure. And like, I'm so, like, by the way, everybody who's listening, I am salty about it because there's a reason to be salty about it. We live in a world right now where there are very few people that are giving away the best information for free. Mm-hmm. And when I see people doing it, I have a, Jason Freed. Nothing but a respect for that man, you know. Like, like you know, when you see it, you've got to you've got to uh, acknowledge it. And yeah. so, I uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm a little bit disappointed with certain individuals' response to the post that says buy my book. I mean, like, what yeah. the fuck are we talking about? I mean, about? how much are you investing in your content, your free content every year that you put in? You've got two video, full-time video people. You've got a whole team for Ask Gary V. And by the way, uh, again, I can feel myself right now in my heart saying, but they're right. Like, it's crazy, right? Like, I'm pulling from these very opposite directions, which is, I have empathy. I get it. Yeah. Like, you don't want to, especially when you're not used to it. Mm. I get it. It's funny. It's almost like the Donald Trump thing. I think a lot of people are buying from these spammer people because that's all they hear from them and they don't expect anything less and so whatever. Right, right. You know, it's it's a very, you know, it really fucks with my jab, 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 right hook thing. The truth is though, I think we're also being a little sensitive. When I look at my mass numbers, the 13 people that are complaining about it compared to the million <laughs> right, that right, right. aren't, I think I'm being yeah. a little bit soft here. So, it, yeah. fuck you, Gary. I just needed to <laughs> exactly. say that. Um, all right, I got a few questions yes, left. I've got let's so do power many more. Round. I've got so many more. Well, let's but let's, we'll, let's we'll go do. speed round then. Okay, cool. Um, what day... And year are you gonna buy the Jets, and how much is it gonna be for? That's a fun question. Uh, I'm forty. Uh, twenty. Uh, two thousand. Two thousand forty-one. Uh, January twelfth, two thousand forty-one. January twelfth is the day the Jets won the Super Bowl in nineteen sixty-nine. Seven billion. Two thousand forty-one. I need time. Wow. I'm not doing behavior that's gonna make me rich enough. Yeah. I'm a I'm a tortoise in a hare's body. Yeah, yeah. Seven billion. How old will you be then? Sixty-five. 
65. And wow. you know what? Now that I hang out with a lot of 65 and 70 and 75 year olds, like remember how old you thought a 40 year old was five minutes so ago? So old. I'm 40. I feel it's crazy. Like right? Yeah. Well, you think you're, we're homies, right? Yeah, yeah. But like four, like when you were 24, you were like, that's fucking I'm going to be 33 finished. in a month and I'm like, 40's going to be here before I know it. Yep. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it sure I think is. I met you when you were 32 or 33. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. Okay. Let's do it. Um, what are you most grateful for in your life recently? Recently? Mm-hmm. The, the continuous health of my inner circle. I'm just flabbergasted that I'm 40 years old and still haven't had a devastating death in my family. Mm. Now, yeah, that comes great. from an unfortunate place. I lost three of my four grandparents before I was born. Um, but I'm very lucky. Yeah. If you could be any pro athlete right now, who would you be and why? Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, because he's probably going to be the Jets quarterback this season, and I would feel that that would put me in the most control to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, what's the pro athlete, any sport, that you think resembles you the most? That's a great question. Probably Kobe, because Kobe's super competitive. W- when he's in his zone, mm-hmm. on the field, I don't know Kobe. I don't. So first of all, I don't know Kobe. Second of all, just I'm nasty. Uh, you know, Kobe and Don McSue, I'm bad. I'm a ba- I'm actually a very bad guy. <laughs> I wish AJ was here. I once punched AJ in the face, and that was only seven years ago. Wow, in a basketball I, game or what? I th- there, you know, um, there was something very weird that happened at uh, Vayner Media. I um, we play we play basketball every morning, and um, we have a couple of female players who are really legit. And one was on a breakaway, and I disproportionately <laughs> flagrant fouled her. And I looked back at everybody, and the level of disgust <laughs> on my friend, my my employees slash friends' faces. I turned back like, "Yeah, right. No easy baskets." <laughs> and they were looking at me like, "You are the worst human being on earth." I I almost get oh I get into fights at sporting events. Yeah, yeah. I yell at little kids and old men. <laughs> there was an old guy walking up. The Jets were beating the Steelers two years ago, late in the game. This eighty-year-old guy's walking up the stairs in a Steelers jersey. I stand up and go. Hey, old man, you're finished. And everybody laughed because they thought I was talking about the game, but I was actually talking about in life. Like, I get really, like, I get, I, so oh, I think the players that are dirty yeah. or highly competitive throw elbows, <clears throat> dirty players. Uh, Finnegan, that corner <coughs> from, you know, Odell Beckham's mm. little outrage. Those, I'm, I'm not a good person. Yeah. What's something every day that's uh, non negotiable for you? Working out, uh, you know, that's certain a amount question. of sleep, a um, certain amount of... That's great. Uh, that's a fun question. Saying nothing. I love you to your, Nothing. You know. No, I, I'd be lying. Okay. The truth is nothing. Is there a ritual that you follow with all this crazy madness or is no. it just kind of like whatever comes up, comes up? I think really the closest thing to it is that I think about how grateful I am. Mm. Gratitude yeah. is the closest. Not I love you. All the things I'd like to say for everybody to think I'm a better person. Saying I love you to my wife, um, <laughs> hugging my kids, uh, you know, <clears throat> putting in a good day's work, uh, workout, yeah, yeah. calling my mother, like nothing. Yeah. That's just the truth. When you look yourself in the mirror, what do you see and what do you say to yourself? Probably the most egotistical things that I say. I'm probably most egoed out when I'm talking to myself which means that I've got a lot of confidence and ego. Mm. I, re- I really, whenever I talk to myself in the mirror, it's always the same thing, which is like, you're gonna fucking do it, man. You're, you're fuck, man, you're good. Like, like, it's real good stuff. And it's not like false pumping up. I only do it seven times a year. <clears throat> but like something would have just happened, either adversity or mm-hmm. something great. And I'll look myself and say, mm-hmm. mm. we got this. I got a funny... Kevin Durant walked off the field, uh, off the court the other day against the uh, Warriors, and uh, it was a big game the day before the Super Bowl, and they lost. It was the first time they played, and the Warriors are having probably the greatest season of it's any amazing. basketball, right? Yeah. And he did something that me and AJ took note of. He kind of shook his head and said, "Okay, yeah," and he gave me that like, "Okay, motherfuckers, you won, but we'll see you, and we got a shot. I got this." Right. And it was that's what I do with myself. Like mm. if something good or bad's happening. I'll look myself in the mirror and be, and I'll just say, mm-hmm. mm. like, I know I'm built for this. Two minutes before a big speech or big presentation, what do you say to yourself or what do you, is that there I, anything that you do? I've got a big one today. I go into a, an absolute Rocky Balboa boxer zone and I get very competitive against my audience. I want to go out there and 
compete with them. Mm. I want to compete for their attention versus their phone. I want to compete for the greatest talk that they've ever seen. I want to inspire them to make them understand they aren't working hard or smart enough. I just know it. I just know it. Um, And so I get very combative with them. Equally, I'm very compassionate and want to only bring them value. I am going to this conference today. There's like 12,000 people, a lot of digital marketing shit. There won't be a single ounce of me that cares about any one of them buying a book. It will be, and that's so different than my contemporaries. They go into sales mode. I go into the reverse. I go into, I'm gonna deliver the biggest value they've ever seen in this talk, and I'm gonna guilt them into discovering more about me and converting. Mm-hmm. I love that. Okay, three final questions. Yes. Um, it is your last day. And every, On Earth. And everything you've created, and you know, you're 100 years old, everything you've created is gone. All the videos, all the daily Vs, the Ask yep. Gary Vs, everything you've ever put out there is erased. Gone. Books, everything. I'd kill Vayner myself. VaynerMedia, gone. I'd kill myself. All your friends and family are there. Kill myself. <laughs> you're, you're healthy, you're happy, but it's the last day. Uh, do I know it's the last day? It's the last day. You, okay. You know, when you go to sleep yeah. at night, you're gonna, it's, Dead. it's over. Okay. And uh, they say, we have nothing to remember you by. Yes. It's all erased, everything. But yes. here's a piece of paper and a pen. Yes. And you get to write down three truths, three things that you know to be true about everything that you've experienced I would in only life. do one thing. What would you write down? I would only write <clears throat> one thing down. What would that be? 5149. I would run a 51, I'd run a slash, and I'd run a 49. What's that mean? It would mean that I wanted to give everybody that ever came across me 51% of the value. And that's how I live my life. I so know what to do with the 49 that I want to give 51. It's leverage. Mm. It's, um, it's how I think about it. It makes me feel good. I love being liked. I, Lewis, look, you and I run in similar circles and around a lot of different things. You know, you know what I'm about to say is so true and I'm very proud of this and I am saying this because I want everybody to hear it. Do you know how nice it feels for me to know that anybody that you talk to when my name gets brought up that knows me even a little bit thinks I'm great mm-hmm. and only the people that don't, don't? Like whatever I have in hate or they don't believe the hype or what's he really about, they just don't know me. Yeah. And anybody that spent any amount of time, like listen, there could be moments in time but I know that the 137 times I've been brought up in different cocktail parties or things like that, that you, you've rarely heard from somebody who's interacted with me negative. Right. It's always been positive, right, right. and I love that. Yeah. And that's 5149, man. Mm, I like it. Um, I want to make sure everyone goes to get the book. I have one final question. I want to make sure everyone gets the book. Where can we go to get it? That's all, you know. I, you're doing real nice by me here, but I don't think anybody's confused where they can go and get it. You know, there's Perfect. plenty of places. Where's, where's the main thing we're going to send people to right now? Is it the Ask Gary V? Is it the Daily V? I think the Daily V would be fun. Yeah. You know, I think I think there's, you know, because Ask Gary V, the video show, the, so for a lot of people that are listening, they're podcast listeners, right? So my podcast is not that strong because it's the transcribed audio from mm-hmm. my video show. And I think Ask Gary V, the show is really, really good. I am captivated by the reaction to Daily V. It's amazing, yeah. Um, the Daily Vlog thing is really cool. So YouTube, Gary Vaynerchuk, youtube.com slash Gary Vaynerchuk. Cool. Google Vaynerchuk, it's a we'll, challenge. We'll link it up here in a second, um, yeah. So I would say that, because I'm curious for a lot of people here who don't know me, they watch two or three of those, I think they'll get a sense. Yeah, it's and that's amazing. cool. We'll have them on the show notes as yeah. well. Make sure to follow Gary at Gary V everywhere, especially Snapchat right now. That's V-E-E. I'm an idiot with that terrible branding go. for such a smart branding guy. <laughs> Two silent E's. There you go. Um, before I ask yes. the final question, I want to acknowledge you, Gary. I acknowledge all my guests at the end for being yourself, 100% unapologetically you, and for not being being afraid to be a dick. <laughs> and I think it's a lot of people are afraid to put themselves out there because they don't want to have people hate them or be talking bad about them. And I think it's... You know, a lot of people could say, like, you are a dick or this and that, or you've got an ego, but I think it's who you are and you care so deeply that you're willing to put it out there all in the I'm line. I'm only doing that yeah. because people are accepting people with right. bad intentions. Right, I'm right. only being a dick. Like, anybody that really knows me, I'm petrified to not be liked. Yeah. I hate it. Sure. I hate it with all my heart. I'm uncomfortable in it. The only reason I'm a dick and like and by the way just for everybody who doesn't know me the reason people think I'm a dick is because I'm combative around things that have been accepted as very lowest common denominator marketing and business tactics I'm talking about the things that we're all whispering about Mm. in the halls I'm just putting them to the forefront all the same things you're talking about that person's really (laughs) spam or they're really not that good or they're full of shit I'm just saying it out loud in front of everybody because I want everybody to win yeah 
I love it. Well, I want to acknowledge you for setting the bar as well. Thank for you, For all brother. of us to really raise our game up there. Thank so you, I appreciate brother. it. Final question, what's your definition of greatness? It's a great question. What's my definition of greatness? I think, <laughs> I got one. I think that when it's all said and done, and we've been talking a lot about legacy, that when it's all said and done, you've achieved greatness when even though all along the way there was a narrative of he's a dick Mm. or he'll never pull it off or what has he ever really done? Greatness is when you are on that last day, both the fans and the non-fans have to accept and acknowledge the results. Jerry V, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking right here to subscribe because each week we come out with awesome, epic, and inspiring interviews and messages and videos just for you. So click subscribe right here to get notified of new videos every week. Also, if you enjoyed this specific interview, we've got a lot of great interviews like this that are uplifting and inspiring. So click right here to watch the previous interviews because the people I've had on are pretty cool and epic as well. So click here to watch previous interviews. Click here to subscribe. I love you guys, and I'll see you very soon.